All right, welcome. Um, hopefully you guys are doing well today. Again, um, discussion will be due tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, your quiz, or not not tomorrow night, Friday. So quiz will open up. No, sorry. Homework is open. And then homework will be due by Friday night, but encourage you to try to do it tonight. And then your quiz will open up. Where did I Thursday, sometime. Thursday, yeah. Thursday at um, 5 p.m. Yes. So thank you. Thursday at 5 p.m. Just in case any of you are leaving for the weekend, you can get it done before you leave. So partial fraction expansion quiz. Um, so just make sure you're really feeling good about the partial fraction expansion. Um, any questions about that so far? Yes. So when you have like the T to the something in the numerator. Uh huh. So what you're doing on that, this is actually one I can do. Um, in color. Okay. So you can rewrite this as S, S minus eight, S plus two, S plus four J times S minus four J. So this is the same, right? And then you can rewrite that again as A over S plus two plus B over, well, these were solved, let's see. It was, I don't have A down here. Let's see, what was A? A was one. So A was one in that case, so A was equal to one. So then this is one over and then this we solved is EJ is it plus 90? I think it was plus 90 for this one and then a minus 90 if I remember right. But it could have been backwards. Let me go look at that one. Yes. S plus 4J, S minus 4J. Oh, I think it was down here. Minus J90. So these were backwards. Okay. E to the minus 6S. So those are all the same, correct? So we leave this alone because we use this last one only when you transform it back into the time domain. So we translated this first, and then we applied the E minus six S as far as like a transform back into the time domain. So you just basically ignore it to solve for the A, B, and C values. So you're not ignoring it fully for the transformation, you're just ignoring it to find that A, B, and C. It feels like instinctually that I want to keep that there. Yeah. It's all like keep plugging in S with that. But would we end up with a different answer or? It would get really messy. Yeah. It gets it gets to be ugly. And so that's why you want to separate them out as a multiplication in this S domain. And then because we already know what that e to the minus s it does, when it translates back into the time domain, it gives a shift. And so we use that instead and then are finding for the A, B, and C of just that portion of it. So the reason we're doing that is because we know that this property in the time domain translates back into this time domain property of just shifting it. You substitute that T just to a T minus the capital T value. And mathematically, that's much easier to solve. 
And so you just do them as a multiplication in the S domain. All right, any other questions, comments? Okay, so um, let's see what I have for this one. Eight old, that's old. Oh, I know what I was going to comment on this one. Um, okay, so I had a question that came up. Let me just copy this. People asked, you know, can you use like any S, S value? And why can you use like any S value? So, So what you're trying to do on these is just to simplify the math as much as you can. The reason why you can use the same value is because these are the exact same expressions, right? We're saying that the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side. So if I plug zero into this left-hand equation, that will equal plugging in zero on the right-hand equation. If I plug in nine, minus one on the left, that's gonna equal the same value as the minus one on the right. So because we can pretty much put any, any S value in there because they're the equal to each other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's why it doesn't matter which S value you pick. You just wanna pick ones that are gonna help you mathematically solve this quicker. So I was picking one, I was picking zero. If J might, if you have a, plus j in there, then picking a minus j to make some term zero is gonna simplify those. So that was where I was picking values just to make it easier mathematically. So, um, so on this, like s equals minus two, when you have minus two plus two, that quantity goes to zero. So that's why we pick those to make some of those terms go to zero and you only have one term left, in this case it ends up being C. And so you can directly solve for C. So that is, you know, kind of this first portion here. And then in the second portion, you're using equation. And then I just pick different values of S's. So S equals zero is an easy one to multiply. It gets rid of some of the terms in there. And then it makes like my two, you know, a little easier than like two, you know, plus one is a little bit more complicated, but one is also an easy number to add and divide by. So that was why I picked S equals one on the other one. But you could pick any value knowing that if I do it on the left-hand side, I'm also doing it on the right-hand side, those will equate together. And so any value in there should work. Does that help? Okay, any questions about partial fraction expansion? Okay, we're ready to move back to problems. Okay, all right. So we are gonna move back to some problems. I think I, okay. Um, Oh, I forgot to bring that demo. Good. All right, so we're gonna do this problem here. So you have a capacitor and an inductor, but because of where the switch is, it's not necessarily saying that, well, we could solve this because the switch then opens to making them in series. So you could use the solution of an RL, RLC circuit in series. But I want you to use the technique of what we've gone with the Laplace, and then I'll also show you the solution that would be in the time or in the other one. Oh, I can't talk, sorry. So go ahead and break up into some small groups and try to solve this. So I guess right before I 
I do need to go back up one minute. So how do you write this seven volts? So you have a switch which becomes open and right before it's open, it's gonna be closed. So you're gonna use that seven volts to determine the initial value on the capacitor and the inductor at time zero minus. Okay. So that's how you're gonna use the seven volts. And then when you switch it over to the Laplace, it's gonna be seven U of T because you're gonna do it after the switch has been changed. Hopefully that helps. Okay, go ahead and work on that. Thank you. 
So if you're finding this at t equals zero minus, then you got to redraw the circuit. And so t equals zero minus. So this is going to be an open. And what do you do with the inductor? You're shorted. Correct. So this will be shorted. And so um VC of zero is still going to be here. So what will that one be? Correct? Because it's just a wire. And then IL will be. That's the current, which is seven volts over the resistor. Correct. So that will be your initial values. And then The difference in this technique is that instead of then moving the switch to an open, redrawing that circuit, you're going to redraw this circuit a little bit differently. So we need to redraw zero minus. What's that time equal zero minus? So this is only to get those initial values. I see. And then from there, you're going to redraw the circuit. And again, you're going to replace these, but they're going to be a little bit different. So just trying to get enough room. After it, that opens, so you know that here you're going to put, um, this will change to 7 U of T. Anybody have a good explanation why? 
Why is that seven U of T? Yeah. So this is because you have a switch in there, which creates it to be only valid after its switch is done. So you just use T as the time when it's moved switch positions. So you include it because you have a switch. So that's the only reason. Only because you have a switch. Um, okay, and then you're going to use these models are what you're going to use now. So I'm going to just do these in series just because the other circuit is was in series, but it doesn't matter. You could use either model. So I'm going to use the capacitor and the inductor. And the capacitor's on top, and the inductor is underneath. Whoops. There we go. And then this will be the circuit that you actually solve. And then this one will be open. So now solve this in the S domain using whatever technique you want. And your goal is to find I L of T. So once you find it in the S domain, then you can change back to the time domain. Yes. Does it matter which way we orient um, the voltage source? We could have made it before the inductor or after the inductor. Yes. Does that matter? Okay. So another person asked this, like, well, I have two voltage sources in there. Oh, shoot. That. Ah. Okay. Ah. Good and bad about cut and paste. Okay, we're gonna work off this image. Okay, so is this the same is the question. So what if I, oh, let me do it over here, it's easier. Okay, now I treat, once it's in the S domain, I treat the capacitors and the inductor as a resistance. So you just treat them like it has that impedance value. And so it's one over SC ohms, and then the inductor is LS ohms. So is this the same as this branch? So I have moved and I've swapped the inductor and the battery. So the nodes will be different. Current will be the same through it, right? IL will still be the same. What about the voltage across the inductor? Will it be the same in this place as it is? Well, I guess I'll call it VL2 as this one, VL2. Is this valid to say that this still is VC2 and the voltage across that one is VC2? 
This would be VC zero minus over S. That was annoying. This is a test. It was really a test. There was a test. Oh my goodness, that was loud. Okay. Um. So the voltages are the same. That voltage battery of VC zero minus over S is the same in both, and the inductor voltage of that LIL zero minus is the same. So the current through it is the same, voltage is the same. The only difference is its location. So yes, the node right here, let me do these different colors. So this node in comparison to this node, if I measure with a multimeter will be different voltage because I'm comparing it at a different stage. But across each element, it will actually stay the same. This will be the same and this will be the same as this one and this one. So voltage across the element stays the same. Current going through the elements stay the same. Is it just like a delayed? Some people are having a delay. So your system, if you're just, you're really. <laughs> okay. Um, some people have delayed service on theirs, I guess. Um, it's the service. Yeah, that's true too. I forget about the services in the room are very different for every provider. This is a test. Yes, this is a test. Um, so voltages stay the same across each element. Current going through them stays the same. But if I was to probe it from one location to another, that voltage would change. But as far as between the whole thing, between this node and this node, the total drop will be the same. So you can move elements within a branch in series. You can even combine them. So say I wanted to combine these by adding these together as one source. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be that I would have a minus of the L, that would be a minus IL zero minus plus the VC zero minus over S. Those would be the same too. So I, so I could add those and combine them just like I do like with resistors. I could combine and have kind of one lumped resistance here of value SL plus one over at CS. So I can shift those elements if it makes it easier for me to solve the circuit. So just kind of want you to understand and hopefully wrap your hands, head around those things. So by shifting them, it doesn't change the current, but if that's confusing to you, don't shift them around. But others of you may be like, oh, that makes it easier for me to visually see what's going on with this. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so go ahead and solve this circuit and try and find the IL of T. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm <laughs> 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 
one episode is faster than zero, and the doctor is stuck over really. And then when we transport, we have the seven wall. Right, so you're trying to get it to be like an S plus number equals zero yeah. form. And so you would bring the other part of this over to the other side. So it'd be S plus two minus plus square root of two equals zero. Does that make sense? So you're just moving those over to set it equal to the form where this factored form is the S plus some number. So all I did was add it to the other side and set it equal to zero. And so this is where you get the S plus two minus square root of two, and then an S plus two plus square root of two. Does that make sense to get those factored forms down? Yeah. Okay. So she was just asking, how do you get this factored form once you solve the quadratic for that S value? Yes. Sorry, did you go over how you got to that IL equation? That's not what I got. So okay. yeah. Yeah, we can go over that. Other questions? Was there a, a, on the table like an additional little box for information that had like the form A S B? Like yeah. Um, yeah. About the last one. Yes. Yeah, we could use that one too. Oh, it's not on this one. Let's see. Or did I not have it on this one either? There it is. Yeah, this was because it's an extra one that I added later. So when this gets uploaded, um, I'm pretty sure it's on. so it is on this one i was like i just wanted to make sure okay so it's just on the table the table so yeah uh, thank you. so yeah the table and the handouts so it will have that okay, okay. 
All right, so question about like, how did I get this equation? So I did a voltage loop around. So this is seven U of T or seven volts. Either one is gonna transform into the S domain. So do not forget to change your source. So the only thing that doesn't change is your R value. So these were already changed to the S domain by being a capacitor and inductor by the, using this model. So going around this loop, I can pick anywhere to start. I'm gonna do, I need to label all of these um, plus minus. And this current is your IL that you're trying to solve. So in the S domain, it will become a capital IL. So I have a plus there, a minus, and then a minus, 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 plus. So my loop will be plus seven over S minus IL times R, which was four minus IL times one over CS and C is 0.5. And then a VC zero was zero. So I'm just gonna leave, that would be a minus zero. And then a minus SL is one times IL. And then a plus L, which is one, over the initial value of seven over four, and that gets me my loop. So from here, I can combine all of the ILs. So I can take those over to the other side to get a positive for each, plus um, two over S is easier to write, and then plus S is equal to seven over S plus seven over four. So now I wanna combine these together. So getting a common denominator that gives me 4S plus two plus S squared over S. And a common denominator here gives me uh, seven times four would be 28 plus seven S over four S. And so the IL equals 28 plus 7S all over 4S and then divided by 4S plus two plus S squared over S. So the S's here can cancel. And then it's uh, 28 over four is seven and then seven over four is 1.75 S all over S squared plus four S plus two. All right, so you were saying you didn't get quite the same answer. So you see where you made the mistake. Okay, any others that have questions about what you did, how you got there? Okay, next step of this is that once you get this, we need to now change this into partial fraction expansion, match that up to the table, and then be able to go backwards to get U of T. So you can either use the form that's the AS plus something um, and use those equations, or you can do partial fraction expansion and have two terms A and B and then translate them back. They should be equal to each other. The hard thing is if you do it with the AS, um, that cosine, it's gonna come out the cosine form. And for this one, it's gonna come out as e to the e raised to that. So you'd have to do some manipulations between the e form to get back to the cosine form. So that makes it hard to compare those two, just to note. But either way would be correct. Just so you know, I solved this using, um, I think, just ease. 
Yep. I just have my solution in the E form, not the cosine form. All right, so go ahead. It takes a little bit of time to solve this now to get IL of T from this S equation. So it's 16 minus 8 divided by 2. So minus square root of 8. This can also be written as the square root of 4. And then 8 over square, you know, square root of both. And then that can get, that's where it's easier to see that it's square root of 2. 8 over 4 which is, but you're fine to write it as the square root of eight over two. That's, I mean, it ends up being the same number. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that was where that came from. So this might, I'm trying to discern if I made an arithmetic error or if this mm -hmm. transform is not always true. Um, and so I'm right here, my a value I have is two because I need to have it as a two times a times s. So your small a value is two. Yes, yes. That's, that's what I think. Yeah. Small a value would be two, you can get rid of those. And the c value I have is two as well. And the trouble I'm getting into is b says c minus root square. So I'm looking at the square root of two minus. Well, no, two minus four, this will be negative. Oh, yeah. So you're going to end up with it. Uh, yeah, J. And so what I've learned then is I'm trying to take the arc tangent. And because I have a J value in there, it's saying um, it won't work. No, is that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. that is true. OK, OK. So you can't take the arc tangent of an imaginary. OK. Yeah. So in this case, then, doesn't always, which is yeah. why that code. OK, OK. I will get yeah. the S way. Yeah. Thank you.
leave a minus on the bottom, but then I have a yeah. yeah. Minus, minus. Okay. But still, plus the number. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's a minus. Yeah. 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 When are they? And oh my God. Is my eight if it's a complex conjugate on those. So only if you have like um, a over so those would be complex conjugates of each other. So S plus two plus J complex conjugate. So when you have the term on the bottom that's a complex conjugate of the other, the numerator will be the complex conjugate of the other one. So you only have to find one only in that case. So separate case. <laughs> when I heard someone say something about taking a derivative. You don't have to take it. No. I was like, no, that you just change it back to the time domain of IL. Oh, like, now, you know, now, you know, 
But we have to so go to this big bond to get like um, we have to like show out our work to one get or will we just be able to say on oh, get so it's the negative? You can okay. just say it. Yeah. I have to go to one. So. Okay, good luck. See ya. Hi. So if it doesn't end up canceling, then, well, in this case, you should be able to always have to that cancel amount. So like the first one, well, I'll go through them, but you can always have when they're not a repeated route, you should always be able to find one that will cancel the other one. In the cases, yeah. yep, and then it would cancel it out. No. It, in this one, if it's an S plus like 2J and then there's an S plus minus J, it would be, but in this case, it's not. Another student asked. Me. Separate case. This should be the time you This yeah. should be a little bit more simple, right? Yeah. Okay. Does that the exact answer that you got for? And is that ILT or VLT? So this is ILT. So this is ILT. Okay. So this is ILT. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It should look like that. So you, it looks like you solved for V. The V of T. Let me see what you mean. Yeah, well, I'm just going to what exactly? So that's I of T calculation. Yeah. So that's I of T. All right. So this is the I of T. Did you guys get the IL of T or got some thumbs up? Yes, thumbs up. <laughs> Majority of you know. Oh, got the thumbs up. Okay. Hopefully, that, that happy you got it. Okay. Those that may not have gotten it, yes, questions. Yes, thank you. Sorry. It is a negative. I just did that and then I didn't change it again. This is a negative. 0.36, sorry. Okay, so getting there, you can do this either of two ways. You can either get a common denominator for A and B and then equate the top to the top over there, or you can take the each side and multiply it by one of the terms. I like to usually take the other side and multiply a term. But either way is correct, just use the same method for each one. So if I did this and multiply it by the S plus two plus the square root of two, that's gonna cancel it out on this one and it will cancel out one of the terms over here. I'll rewrite that. So this will end up being A plus B and I'm gonna also let S B the negative two minus square root of two. So I use that component or that factored form and then I set it back to zero and then solve for S. And hopefully this will lead to then, this is why you can always have that, one of those terms go to zero. So a minus two minus square root of two plus two plus square root of two. So that ends up being a zero term. So this goes to zero, and then I have a minus two minus square root of two, and then the term will be still left, one of those terms will be left on the bottom. So, and then it's the one with uh, plus two minus square root of two. So multiplying all that out, I end up getting A is equal to, a negative 0.36. And then I can do the same thing by multiply the original 
by the B term. And that gives me, the, you know, the A term will go to zero. I'm, I'm not gonna write those all out, but. Um, and here I'm gonna let S equal to, then I can write it a little bit more. S plus two minus the square root of two equal to zero. So S is gonna be minus two plus the square root of two. So that ends up being one for B. And then I have a seven plus 1.75, negative two plus the square root of two all over negative two plus square root of two uh, plus two plus the square root of two. And that ends up giving me 2.11. And then I use the table with A over I'm a little confused. Thank you. Um, the transform gives you a e to the minus a t u of t, and this was uh, minus point three six over. The term was s plus two, plus square root of two. And then this term was over s plus two minus the square root of two. So transforming those gives me minus 0.36 e to the minus two minus square root of two t, and then 2.11 e to the minus two plus square root of two, or do I have this backwards? No. Okay, U of T. Okay, questions. Any questions? All right, so yes. Yes. So I don't know if you guys all heard that, but she was wondering about when to change, when do you have to change to that polar form to be able to find the answer for B and A? Um, and so you're always gonna get in, in polar form when you have a J in there. Um, that will always be the end form that you wanna get is to have that B in polar, okay? All right, any other questions? All right, you guys ready to go practice more partial fraction expansion? <laughs> Homework due and quiz will be due. Um, have a great fall break. And then I will see you the following week. Nice to see you guys.